It is indeed a great pleasure for me to be given this opportunity to share my thoughts with you on strengthening the ASEAN India partnership in the Indo Pacific at this inaugural session of the Fourth ASEAN India Youth Summit. Events such as this are crucial to providing you our youth with a platform to exchange the ideas and perspectives on the pertinent issue facing our world today. I believe that the regular participation of youth in global and regional fora will bring tangible results in cultivating good knowledge, values, and fostering a spirit among our young people. On that note, allow me to congratulate the 150 youth delegates from ASEAN and India for your participation in this youth summit at Hyderabad. You are in a unique position to harness and be inspired by the creativity and innovation of the city and following your efforts to strengthen ASEAN-India relations. Excellencies and distinguished participants, the ASEAN-India relationship has expanded rapidly these past few decades, where it was established as a sector dollar partnership in 1992 to a full dollar partnership in December 1995. The Joint Declaration on, on ASEAN-India Partnership for Peace, Progress and Shared Prosperity, a landmark guiding document signed in 2004, sets out the roadmap for long-term ASEAN-India engagement. Seven years later, in 2015, the ASEAN leaders welcomed India Act East policy, noting that it could com complement the ASEAN community building efforts. On the economic front, the ASEAN India Trade in Goods Agreement, signed in 2009, paved the way for the creation of one of the world's largest free trade areas in the world. With more than 2 billion people and a combined GDP of 5.51 trillion US dollars. Building upon these achievements, ASEAN and India have been taking joint actions across various areas of cooperation under political security, economic and social cultural spheres. At the 19 ASEAN India summit held last year in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, in commemoration of the 30th anniversary of ASEAN India dialogue relations, the leaders of ASEAN and India agreed to establish a Comprehensive Strategic Partnership, or CSP. They also welcome opportunities to promote practical cooperation in key priority areas as identified in the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific, namely maritime cooperation, connectivity, the Sustainable Development Goals, as well as economic cooperation. The substantial progress clearly signifies a long-term commitment between ASEAN and India to work together more closely towards a deeper and more meaningful partnership for the benefits of our countries and our peoples. Under Indonesia's ASEAN chairmanship this year, our region will focus on a number of priority areas, including food security, energy security, global health architecture, financial stability, and mainstreaming of the ASEAN outlook on the Indo-Pacific. This broad set of priorities are central to fostering ASEAN's resilience and contribution to peace, stability, security, and prosperity in the region and the world at large. It is also very much in line with ASEAN and India's vision to strengthening cooperation and partnership. Excellencies, and distinguished participants. In realizing the shared goals of us in India, it is crucial that the youth, as our current and future leaders, are equipped with needed skills, capabilities, and values that will further contribute to, to the advancement of peace and prosperity in the region and beyond. To realize this, we need synergy, coherence, and continuous collaboration. Therefore, I applaud India for its long-standing commitment and leading the regular convening of ASEAN India Youth Summit, which has been part of our joint efforts to sustain socio-economic ties as well as to enhance connectivity and people-to-people -people exchanges. I would also encourage our young people to be given more opportunities 
to engage high-level policy makers in deliberating, in deliberating over dynamic and innovative solutions to contemporary challenges. Another important part of our youth development policies is in increasing investment in youth programs relating to education and skills as well as employment and opportunities. In light of the impact that COVID-19 has had on education systems, such as school closures and the use of digital technology in education, we need to ensure that young people in our region are not left behind. I am pleased that ASEAN is taking further steps in upskilling and reskilling its human resources through collaboration with its dollar partners, including India. Notably, both ASEAN and India are proactively realizing the shared commitment through social cultural co cooperation, which includes the scholarship provision at the Nalanda University and the faculty exchanges under the ASEAN India Network of Universities. The entrepreneurship development centers and the centers for the English language training have also been established in Cambodia, Laos, PDR, Myanmar, and Vietnam as part of the Initiative for ASEAN Integration, or IAI. On that note, allow me to express my sincere appreciation to the government of India for continuously advocating people-to-people -people connectivity and enhancing quality human resource development among our young people. To our youth delegates, I would like to impress upon you that through continuous engagement and a passion to make a difference, you have an opportunity, in fact a golden opportunity, here to create positive changes across the Asia Pacific and Indian Ocean regions. I hope that you will remember that event as a life-changing experience that offers you the chance to contribute to bringing the governments and people of ASEAN and India closer together. I wish you all a successful event with fruitful discussions. Thank you.